Welcome to Cross Lake Church in Portsmouth, Virginia. I'm Pastor Rick Williams, and we are glad you decided to join our broadcast. In our society and the world, there are thousands of problems, personal problems, marriage problems, health problems, financial problems, political and government problems. There is just always a list of problems in our society. However, I want to share with you the number one problem in the world and how to fix it. The number one problem in the world and how to fix it. You're going to be surprised what it is. So listen very carefully to the entire message. I'm confident if you stay with it, listen carefully, it'll help you and change your life. And if you have a Bible, I invite you to turn to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And if you do not have a Bible, we'll be sharing it with you on the screen as we go along through the message today. But before I share the message with you, here's Miss Heather Collins singing two songs. Sing along, think about the words deeply, and it will be a great encouragement to your life. And I'll be right back with today's message. Welcome to Cross Life Church. We are so happy that you have joined us this morning and we would love for you to stand and just worship the Lord as we sing and praise his name. darkness falls, it won't be There's a God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is power in the mighty name of Jesus. Backing down from any giant, I know how this story ends. Yes, I know how this story ends. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for Good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for and you turn it for good, you turn it for good. I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. 
We all know people that are very good at pointing out other people's faults, mistakes, flaws. However, they are blind to seeing their own faults, mistakes, and flaws. There's always people that are quick to tell you or tell me or tell others everything they are doing wrong, but yet they cannot see what they need to improve on in their own life. They are blind to seeing the fact that things that they point out about other people even are things that they need to improve in their own life. In other words, they are blind to self. So I want to ask a question. I want you to think about it for a moment before you answer it. And here is the question. What is the number one problem in the world that exists in every society, every people, and it's been around since the very first people were on the earth. Let me say that again. The number one problem in the world that exists in every society, every people, it's been around since the beginning of earth. Now, some of you might think it's medical or political or social. Some of you might say, oh, it's world peace, but it's none of those things. So I want to share with you the number one problem. Here it is. We'll put it on the screen. It's blindness, an inability to see. Now, someone said it like this. The eyes are useless when the mind is blind. The eyes are useless when the mind and the heart is blind. So the greatest problem in the world is when people are blind to seeing God and his truth, an inability to see. If a person is blind to right and truth in God, then they are living a life walking in the dark. They cannot see where they are going. It is the person that easily sees what others should do in their life, but they cannot see what they need to do in their own life. People that are convinced that they are seeing things right when in fact they've been blinded by the world and self. If you look at this world today, what we see is people, just thousands of millions of people that think, I know, I got it, I think right, I feel right, but they don't. In other words, they cannot see what they really need. Again, they are mentally and emotionally blind to see what will lead them to the best life. And they try everything. And they think if I do this or I do something else that I'll find the best life and I'll find happiness and I'll find contentment. But they can't because they're blinded. Now, here's what God has to say about it. And I ask you to turn, if you had a Bible, to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, but follow along on the screen. And here's what God says about this. It says, whose minds are thoughts are our beliefs, our feelings, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Now, I want you to think about that very carefully with me because Jesus tells us here that the minds, that the minds of the God of this age has blinded them. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, God is telling us here there are millions of people whose thoughts and beliefs have been blinded by the God. And you notice in the Bible, it's small g or lowercase g, meaning Satan or materialism or self. People worship all sorts of things in their life. And we, in our life, we have a tendency to blind ourselves at times because we want to believe certain things to be true that's not true. And so the Bible here tells us that people are blinded from seeing what's the most important thing in life. People are blinded and they can't see because of the gods of our age, Satan, self, materialism, all of these things from seeing Jesus Christ. Now, some of you don't realize this, and you're not going to probably take this very well when I say it, but listen, you're blind. 
You say, what do you mean, Pastor Rick? I'm blind. I see perfectly fine. I, I have 20-20 vision. Yes, physically, you see perfectly fine. But do you see the world for what it really is? Can you look beyond the physical and really see what's going on all around you? Do you really know the true meaning of life? Can you see what life is really about? Can you see what the purpose of your life really is? Can you see where you're going and what's coming ahead? Do you see life? Do you see and know real truth or are you blinded into believing things that are a lie? How do you know what you believe is true? You see, here's what happens to us today. People watch television, they watch the news, and they just blindly believe it as truth. When the majority of this is simply the blind leading the blind, it's confusion upon confusion. Let me ask you, do you see God in everything that's going on in our society today? Do you see that God is working in your life? Do you see that every world event and national event and local events, that's God. Do you see that? See, the problem is people are blind today. The most wonderful thing to see in life is the ability to see the hand of God at work. The greatest thing in life that you can see and know is to know God and see him at work all around us. But today people are blind. So much confusion in our mind and our thinking and our emotions, so much confusion in our marriages and our families and raising our children, so much confusion in our decision-making, in our relationships. We can't even get along with other people. Why? Because we're blinded to ourself. We can't see others. We can't see God. What does a person need to do in order to find true happiness and peace? You got to be able to see. You got to be able to see the fact that each and every person, uh, we're all flawed. I'm flawed. We make mistakes. We got to be able to recognize those. We got to be able to see that we don't always make the right decisions. And sometimes in our life, we do things that we say, you know, we shouldn't have done that. You got to be able to see that. You got to be able to see what's really going on in life around you. How do you see in the darkness? It's very hard. If you ever go out somewhere into the country and there's no street lights and there's not a lot of buildings around and it's dark outside, how do you see? You put your hand right in front of your face. If you go out, it's so dark you can't see. That's what the world is today. It's a place of darkness where people can't see. How is it that you and I could see? Well, we need light. Where does that light come from? It comes from Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the light of the world. Every year at Christmas time, we see people put thousands of lights on their homes all over the world. What is it really representing? Most people don't even realize this, but it's the light of Jesus Christ. Jesus, when he came to the earth, he said that he brought light. The people of this world need light. People blindly in their life today, they follow a pattern told to them by the world that says, if you do these things, you'll find happiness and peace. And blindly they follow. So here's the question. Think about this. Be smart. If the world's way, if the world's system of where how people are going and what they're doing is so right, then why is it there's so many billions of people that are suffering today from unhappiness and finding peace in their life? You know why? Because it's the blind leading the blind. It's people watching what's on television and the news. It's people in their life thinking that, oh, this is the way, this is how you find happiness, this is how you find peace. So people are just walking, like walking in the dark. All people see is their opinion and what they feel. Oh, and this is the most funniest of all, is people, everyone thinks they're always right. Everyone has their opinion. Everybody's an expert. Everyone has their thoughts on how the world should be and what the government should do and 
If people would do this, it'd be right. But they can't see their own life. They can't see who they are and what they need to change in their own life. And they are always right. You see, one of people's greatest weaknesses is that we don't want to be wrong. We want to be right about everything. We don't want to humble ourselves so our pride gets in the way. And so it's our opinion, what we think. One of the major themes throughout the word of God is this, spiritual blindness. Spiritual blindness. Now I want to explain to you what I mean by spiritual blindness. We're going to put it on the screen, follow along as I read. And here's what spiritual blindness is. From the website compellingtruth.org, it states this. Spiritual blindness is a condition that an individual has when they are unable to see God or understand his message. Let me say that again. Spiritual blindness is when an individual is unable to see God. Now, let me emphasize that there is nothing greater in life to be able to see and understand than to see God at work, to see God in your life, to feel God's presence, and to understand his message. But people are blind to that. And although God is working all around us, pursuing us and showing his glory, some people cannot perceive his divine workings. A person who does not see God does not know God. A person that does not see God does not know God. And unfortunately, they are spiritually perishing, dying on the inside. In short, those who reject Christ are spiritually blind and they are lost, end of quote. Now, spiritual blindness is living without recognizing and seeing the working of God all throughout life. It is blindness where people cannot see God. It's trying to reveal himself to them through the circumstances of life. Now, look at your life and look at the past circumstances that's happened in the last month, three months, six months. And God is at work in your life and God is all around you trying to get you to recognize him, trying to get you to see him. God is trying to get your attention so that he can save your soul and give you eternal life and forgive you of your sins. And God wants to have a relationship with you. You know how many millions of people in this world do not want to have a relationship with you or with me, but God wants to know you. God wants you to know him. The problem is, is that we don't see God working in the circumstances of our life, but he's there. And the reason we don't is we are spiritually blind. It is a life when people only see horizontally and what's right in front of them. It is a life where people cannot see vertically and they can't see out and they can't see what God is doing in their life. So what the world needs more than any other thing is for people's minds to be open so they can see God, so they can see the love of Jesus Christ and his word. Now, I want to share this illustration with you. I use this illustration in church from time to time. And I like to talk about this in detail because I think it's very important. If you're a thinker in life, you will appreciate this. In my life, I meet very few what I call free thinkers. And what I mean by that is people who are willing to look at their life, look at what they believe, what they feel, what they think, look at their life and say, am I really thinking about this right? Is, or maybe am I viewing this from a wrong direction? So you have to be real honest with yourself. You got to get real honest and say, maybe what I believe is not really true. You ever done that before? Because what happens with people is people go through life believing things because they want to believe it. 
or they believe it because somebody's told them. And so your life is being led by what others have told you or what you think or what you feel, and you don't want to be wrong, but at the same time, that life that you're living has led you to a place that you're not very happy. Now, a free-thinking person is the person that steps outside the circle of their life or what they believe, and they put their feelings and their beliefs under an examination of facts. Have you ever done that before? How do you know what you believe is right? Now, most people believe what their parents taught them. You have a belief system because how you were raised and your parents taught you certain things. Or you, you have a belief system of what you learned from school or what you learned from the news or what you learned on the street growing up. Some people believe what they have learned in their church. And I'm going to surprise you when I say this, but some churches mislead people. Some churches teach wrong things. Not all churches teach the truth. So how do you know for certain what you believe is right, or are you living a blind life? You see, again, the free-thinking person, what they do is they take their life and everything they've learned and everything they believe, and they step outside the circle, and they say, this is what I believe. Is it true? How do I know what I'm doing is right? Or, or I'm just living, living a life that's just blindly going through life. So how can you know if what you're living is right and it's true? Well, you got to do some fact checking. You got to compare. You got to step outside the circle of your life and say, take everything that you believe in your life and you got to do fact checking and compare it to something. Now, what are you going to compare it to? Because everybody says they have truth. Everywhere you go, somebody says, oh, this is the truth or that's the truth. Or some other person says, no, this is the truth. There's all these people claiming they have truth, but there's only one truth, and that's the Word of God. All truth comes back to the Word of God. What thus saith the Lord? So look at your life, compare it to what the Bible says, and say, do what I believe, is it in alignment with the word of God. Jesus is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is truth. The word of God is truth. The Bible says, sanctify them by your truth, which is what? The word of God. So look at your life and ask yourself, why do I believe certain things? And are you blindly being misled? Because if many of you, and let's just be very open and honest, if you put your, the beliefs of your life to a fact check and compare what you believe to the word of God and how you're living your life, here's what you're going to find out. You're blindly believing the wrong things. And that's the issue of why on the inside your soul was not at rest. And because you are blindly being led by wrong things and you can't see the light of Jesus Christ and you cannot see that you have a belief system that is not right and you just blindly go through your life, what has happened is that it has caused you much pain and sorrow and disappointments in your life. Much pain, much sorrow, many disappointments. Now, let me give you an example of how people believe things blindly and they're wrong about it. I hear this all the time. Millions of people believe that they're going to one day die and they're going to go to heaven. Let me tell you that based on the authority or the facts of God's word, not everyone goes to heaven. Everyone is offered the opportunity of heaven. Everyone is offered eternal life but you have to make a decision to have it. So all of these people that say, well, one day I'm going to get to heaven because I'm a good person or I've done good things or because I went to church or I did some religious ceremonies. That's not what the Bible says. 
You would be amazed to know what the word of God actually says. If you fact check your beliefs to the Bible about eternal life, the Bible says clear about this is only one way to get to heaven, only one way to eternal life, only one way to have forgiveness of sin. And that's by faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your savior. That's it. You say, you mean if I'm a good person that I'm not going to get to heaven? Absolutely not. You say, well, you mean if I got baptized or I got sprinkled? Absolutely not. You say, you mean if I'm a, if I'm a member of a church, I'm not a guaranteed heaven? Absolutely not. There's only one way. Has there been a time in your life where you repented of your sins and you humbled yourself before Almighty God and you cried out to Him and you said, God, I'm a sinner and I want to ask forgiveness of my sins and God, I want to put my full heart's faith in Jesus Christ as my Savior. I believe in Him. I want to follow Him. I want to give Him my life and live for Him. If you ever done that, if you haven't, the Bible says you're not saved and heaven will not be your home. So there's this belief, this, this universal belief that everyone dies and goes to heaven. That's completely contrary to the Bible. That's based on people's feelings and people's opinion. You see, one of the things that happens in life is people believe what they want to believe. And one of the more tragic things, and maybe I'll preach on this next week in part two of this, is how people know that they believe things that's not right, but they believe it anyway because it suits their lifestyle. They just want it because it appeals to their flesh. Even though God says it's wrong, and it's going to lead you to a lot of pain, a lot of sorrows. So let me share with you from Acts chapter 28. We'll put it on the screen here. I want you to read what God says about the majority of people in life. Here's what Acts 28, 26, 27 says. It says, go to this people and say, hearing you will hear and shall not understand. And seeing you will see but yet not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing and their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. Let that sink in. God says, People hear, but they don't really hear. They see, but they don't really see. A society where people's hearts are so cold and dull to God. A society where people are blind to God, blind to truth, blind to understanding. But God says he has a solution. What is the answer? What is the cure for this greatest problem in life? for people to turn to Jesus Christ. And God will bring light and vision into one's life so that you could see. The Bible wants, God in his word wants you to see. He wants you to have full vision so you can say, I see who I am. I see my faults. I see how to have a better marriage. How to, how, I see how to raise my children. I see how to correctly worship God. I see all these things. I see God's hand at work all around us. But that's the greatest problem. People don't see it. We see what's right in front of us. And we think we're right, but we're not. Do you see you for you? Ask yourself that question. Do you see you for you? So what is the solution? What's the cure for this is that Jesus Let me share this verse with you. We'll put it on the screen in Luke chapter four, verse 18. Here's what Jesus said about himself when he was on the earth. Luke chapter four, he said this. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Not just poor physically, but poor in spirit. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He broken hearted today. He is to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery. Notice this and recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. 
Now, some people read that and they think, oh, that's just physical. No, although God healed many people physically when he was on this earth, his main purpose was spiritually. All of these things refer to spiritual things that need to be cured in people's lives. Spiritual things, things where you can see God. Jesus says, I will heal them. I will bring recovery to their life. I will bring sight. How? If we put our faith and trust in him. Some of you, you need healing today. You battle with insecurity. You battle with depression. You need healing. Some of your marriages today, it needs healing. Some of you need healing internally. You are just battling with misery and unhappiness and uncertainty and fear and all of those things. And the root cause of all of this is spiritual blindness. The world and yourself and your pride and your selfishness and your stubbornness and willfulness has blinded you, just like it did for me for many years of my life. My pride, my selfishness caused me to make decisions in my life that were wrong. And I wanted it to be right because I wanted it, not because it was right. Because when I put my life under the examination, I stepped outside that circle and said, is what I'm believing right? I was not right. I was wrong. And it's only then when we admit that we're wrong that God can come in and heal us and rescue us and forgive us of all that we've done. You see, our pride gets in the way. Pride blinds people. Selfishness blinds people. Love for things blinds people. Jesus Christ offers another way. He offers a cure to this great problem of blindness because he wants you to see him. He wants you to see the truth. If you let God open up your eyes, he can heal the things of your life. We have to stop. We have to stop and realize maybe the way we're living is wrong, that we have been blinded by the ways of the world, and it's time for us to step outside the circle of our life and everything that we've learned all around us and say, is my life being led by things that it shouldn't be led by? Maybe I'm just believing the wrong things. Maybe I'm just walking in the dark, walking in circles, and I'm not making any progress in my life. Well, Jesus said he came to heal the brokenhearted, to set those captive to sin. Jesus said, I come to set you free. And he said, I come to recover the sight for those who are spiritually blind. So they might see God. They might see truth. Let me share with you that in this world today, I've had people say, well, what is wrong with these people? Why is it that people do some of the things they do? And one of my responses is they're blind. They can't see what real life is all about. They can't see what uh, they should be doing. Even when Jesus was hanging on the cross that, and, he, and he yelled out, he, he spoke out to his father. He says to God the Father why he's hanging on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And that's our world today. We, we believed all of the lies of the world. We believe what we watch off television. We believe everything. And part of it is because we're so prideful and willful, we want to believe it because it suits us. But yet, we're unhappy. Yet, we find ourselves in a place where we're not at peace on the inside. Are you at peace on the inside today? Well, God wants to help you. So again, ask yourself this question. Is it possible for your unhappy, that your unhappiness and struggle is because you're blind to seeing the things of God? And if you say yes, I'm going to be real honest, Pastor Rick. It's a yes. It was a yes for me in my life. For many years of my life, there were things that 
I just held on to and held on to, and I blamed it on other people. I tried to be the victim. I tried to say it was somebody else, and nothing ever got fixed until finally one day I told God, God, it's not other people. It's me. I'm the one. Then God came in, and things began to go right again because then I admitted to God it was my pride, my selfishness. It was me. So be honest. And then listen very carefully. If you don't get this right, if you don't go to God and make this right, let me tell you what's going to happen in your life. You're going to always be searching. You will never be at peace and rest until you let God take the blinders off and let you see the truth. I urge you today to give your life to Jesus Christ. And you say, how can I do that? You say, I I, I want to know Christ as my Savior. How can I do that? So let me explain to you. I've already mentioned it in the message, but let me just summarize it for you. Here's what the Bible says. Not what we think, not our opinion. The word of God is clear. For you to become a child of God, for you to have forgiveness of sin, for you to have a relationship with Jesus Christ as your Savior, and know for certain that heaven will be your home one day for God to take the blinders off so you can see the truth of life and find peace and happiness and find the best life, it begins this way. You have to admit to God. You have to have a conversation with God, your mouth from your heart, and the conversation has to go something like this in your words. God, I come to you and I humbly bow and I confess that I'm a sinner and I ask forgiveness of my sins and God, I'm broken for the wrongs in my life. And I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ that he came to this earth and he died for me for my sins. He died for me. And if you tell God that, that God, I want to ask for forgiveness and I put my full belief and faith in Christ as my savior based on the authority of the word of God, the Bible says God will save your soul. He will heal your broken heart. He will set you free. He will take the blinders off of your life and you will be on the path for the best life. But God doesn't force you to do it. You have to make a choice. You have to decide. Do you want Jesus Christ as your savior so you can see the light of the world? Or do you want to continue like millions of people do every day? They're just going through life blind, walking in darkness, looking for answers in this world to solve the problems of their life. The world has no answers for the deepest needs of your life. No one does except one person, and his name is Jesus. I hope that today's message has helped you in a great way. And if we can help you in any way as a church, you can call Cross Life Church, Portsmouth, Virginia, Or you can go to our website at crosslifeva.org. Again, crosslifeva.org. But I will ask you to do us a favor. And uh, if you get time, drop us an email or let us know you're listening. I would love to know that you're listening to this broadcast. Send us a letter, send us an email, give us a call. Your comments are important to us. You can go to info at crosslifeva.org, info at crosslifeva.org, and send us an email and tell us what you think about the broadcast and what you're hearing. Also, if you're watching online or by other media, some other media source, please share this with your families and friends. All you have to do is just, if you're on Facebook, you can hit the share button and share with them or you can send to them and they can watch it on other media sources as well. And it'll be a great way for you to share the truth of Jesus Christ with other people because, you know, people need the Lord today. People need help. And so do that. And so till next time, one of the things, one of the themes of my life, make much of Jesus and he will make very much of you. God bless.